Good morning, motivators. We're standing here in front of my Dream Zwift setup because today I'm going to show you the basics of how to get started cycling in Zwift because this is hardcore Zwift season through the middle of winter, especially leading into the new year. My name is Taryn. We're going to get you set up with everything that you need to know to start getting the most out of the app right away. This video is broken up into five parts with everything from how to set up the app, what to do when you're in the app, what equipment you need, and what type of setup you need to make your riding and working out in Zwift most enjoyable. Let's get into it. The first thing that you're going to need is a trainer. This is something that goes onto the back wheel of your bike in one of a couple of ways. You can have a wheel on trainer. These are the less expensive versions. This is where your wheel ends up pressing up against a device on the trainer to create some resistance. But the downside to those wheel on trainers is that they aren't nearly as similar to riding outside as what this is, a direct drive trainer where you take the wheel off and you have your bike mounted into some gearing that is actually on the trainer itself and this ends up creating the road feel and the resistance. The wheel on trainers are going to be anywhere from about three to six hundred dollars. The direct drive trainers are usually around seven hundred dollars to two thousand dollars but there is a very significant difference. The wheel on trainers you can't put out a lot of power. The ride feel really isn't that great. It's very herky jerky start stop. I haven't ridden a wheel on trainer in years. I would actually make sure that you would step up to even an entry level direct drive trainer. The experience that you're going to have is going to be much, much better. There are lots of good options for trainers out there. I would recommend that you go to DC Rainmaker's website where he does really, really in-depth reviews on all the trainers and he's unbiased. He isn't sponsored by anyone whatsoever. He just reviews the trainers and gives you a very neutral opinion on them. Generally speaking, I think that the best bang for your buck is that kind of eight to $1,200 sort of trainer. That's gonna get you a really, really good ride experience, basically as much power as you're possibly going to need without really spending the big, big dollars of the $1,600, $2,000 kind of trainers where you don't get a ton more for your buck. Let's get into how you actually ride in Zwift though. The most enjoyable part of Zwift is actually riding in the virtual world. The first time that I ever got on Zwift was about five years ago or so. I was supposed to do a 50 minute bike ride and ended up staying on for almost an hour and a half just because I was having so much fun riding in the virtual world. That's what's different about it versus a lot of the other apps out there that you're not just looking at some random screen that is telling you what power to do or some virtual world where there's nobody else out there. It's a virtual world with other people from all around the world. To be able to get into that virtual world, you need some sort of a screen to display the virtual world. In order of, I would say, least enjoyable to most enjoyable, you can certainly set it up on a phone but it's going to be very not immersive, not super enjoyable. I have set it up on a phone before in a pinch, but it's not ideal. Next most enjoyable is a tablet. That's what I've got here. This is very space saving. It's a little bit more immersive, but it's not as good as my favorite way to ride in Zwift that I had set up at my old pain cave, which is on a TV. For this, I really liked using the Apple TV 4K because it's so inexpensive to get set up and it's really, really robust. You can put it on any TV. You can set up your trainer in the living room. You can have a dedicated setup. The downside is that it's going to take up a lot of space. If it's in a living room, it's in your living room. If it is a dedicated setup like you might have here, you're gonna need a lot of space and a lot of room to be able to do that. That's why I didn't end up doing it here. But it does create a really nice immersive experience super enjoyable, you really feel like you're in the world. If you wanna step it up to a crazy level like I've done before, you can get a gaming computer and hook that up to a projector and I've actually set it up in a complete golf simulator so that I had 10 feet across and eight feet high to actually ride in the world. That was really, really cool. I felt like I was totally in the world but it was so much space dedicated to the trainer setup that it just wasn't practical. So the two things that I would recommend would be either a tablet for space saving, and at the end of this video, I will link to a desk that you can build to hold a tablet, your fans, 
water bottles, your nutrition for just $100 within about two, three hours and some basic tools, or an Apple TV 4K setup. Next, I wanna talk about Zwift running. You can ride in Zwift or you can run in Zwift. There are three main options for getting set up Zwift running. First is with a foot pod like the Zwift Run Pod or the Stride. Personally, I'd recommend the Stride. It's a fair bit more expensive, but you're gonna get a lot more data out of it and you can actually use it outside and get some really, really interesting run dynamic data out of it. The second way, and the little bit more basic way, is setting up a sensor on any sort of treadmill with the NPE Run, R-U-N-N. -N. And the third way is actually getting a dedicated treadmill like this Techno Gym treadmill that I've got set up here. We're looking at somewhere between $100 for the Run Pods all the way up to $15,000 for this big treadmill setup here. Of course, if you wanna step it up and get a Zwift compatible treadmill and get like awesome running experience, I highly recommend the Techno Gym. It is smooth, it is stable, you don't have that bounce that you do have on other treadmills, and you got this really nice big screen up here to stream your Zwift. However, it costs more than my first four cars combined. The fourth thing you need is an add-on that isn't exactly necessary, but if you're actually doing some serious training and you want some good data, you definitely want to have a heart rate monitor. I am a big believer in using heart rate monitor for years and years when you start training before you even upgrade to power meters and really sophisticated devices like that. I think a heart rate monitor is critical because it helps give you some data that you can start pairing to all of your rates of perceived exertion. How hard is hard? How hard is sustainable? Where is too much? And when you use calculators to figure out your racing and running and riding zones, how hard is appropriate? For Zwift, you do need a Bluetooth compatible heart rate monitor. It's not just any heart rate monitor that's going to work. Historically, I have used the Wahoo Ticker or the Garmin HRM Pro. Both of those are going to be able to allow you to ride and run outside and sync up to all of your devices and ride on Zwift. If you go outside of those Bluetooth compatible heart rate monitors, you are getting into scenarios where it might not pair really well or it might not pair at all. So once you've got your chosen setup and devices all selected, just follow whatever guides there are with all of those devices to get set up. Zwift is a really, really stable app and typically it's going to be very seamless to get set up and paired with the app. But the final thing is to get the most out of Zwift you wanna get involved in the community. That is its secret sauce. Like I said, that ride that I did that was supposed to be 50 minutes and it ended up being almost 90 was because there were all these people around and all of a sudden it was kind of competitive and I was seeing people that were dropping me and it started getting me to push a little bit harder. And then I started getting into races and group rides and things like that and challenges. And all of these things that the gamified aspect of it with the community is the engaging part. To get involved in that community, what you want to do is download the Zwift Companion app. It's a different app than the main Zwift app. Just search for Zwift Companion and it'll pop up. You will log in and as long as your phone, which has the Zwift Companion app, is on the same Wi-Fi network as the device that you're actually streaming Zwift on, they're going to end up communicating together. Through this, you can look for challenges, like right now at the beginning of every single year, there's the Tour de Zwift, which you do different stages all around the Zwift worlds. So that's really cool. So you can do races and you find those in the Zwift Companion app if you go to events. There are races going on just about every single minute, every five or 10 minutes or so, there's another race going on. You can do that with cycling or running by clicking the running and cycling guys up at the top. You can organize a meetup and create that meetup, whether it is cycling or running, and you can invite people who follow you and you follow back. You can do group rides like our motive team. We have a Thursday morning group ride and we're going to expand that with more times all around the world so that people from everywhere can join in. You also get those from the events tab here in the Zwift Companion app. And by following and taking part in these sorts of challenges, that's how you become 
more than just somebody who's working out by themselves in a garage here, you actually become part of a community and it's as close to riding outside as you can get if you can't ride outside due to time or where you're at or things like in the world, like something out there that is causing people to be locked inside for a couple of years. So motivators, that is how you get set up in Zwift. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did and you want to know what workouts to do, you can try out our Motive training app. If you go to app.mymotive.com, you can do cycling training or you can do triathlon training or duathlon training. You can get all of your strength training and yoga training to prepare you for whatever challenges or races you want to do. And all of our bike workouts sync with Zwift so you can know what to do every single time that you come in. With all of that said, if you found any of this helpful, hit the like button below later, motivators.